And good evening. Perhaps uh, uh, this uh, event we can start with the words with the light of our hearts, uh, can penetrate any kind of darkness uh, and win over darkness, defeat and conquer darkness. And we would like to greet uh, our friends of the 30th anniversary. And um, uh, this uh, synergy of Ukraine and uh, her international partners um, will make it possible for us to celebrate the 31st anniversary in Ukrainian Simferopol. Now we hear greetings, greetings to our um, armed forces, our military and political leadership. And the um, slogan is very simple. What be to Ukraine? And for you, together with all the rep office, um, office of the Crimean platform, we decided to make it exciting in addition to relations and uh, all the uh, tidbits that you can try. Uh, we can share also the plans for the occupation and reintegration now operations in the new year. We have an ongoing project. It is an artistic one. In this uh, room you can see some works of art uh, that is inspired by our uh, political activists, prisoners of consciousness in the territory of uh, Crimea. We will have a special presentation at the end of this uh, evening. Uh, you'll see in uh, the watch the film, Narman Jalal, the voice of Crimea. And let's start. I would like to invite uh, a very important person to start this evening. And this is not just about um, work, this is about home. Uh, also. Uh, and this is permanent representative of the Ukrainian president in the Crimea, Tamila Tashova. Thank you, friends. Uh, thank you, colleagues. Uh, and I would like to thank my team. Uh, and uh, thanks to them, we can arrange um, this evening. We were getting ready for it. Um, but um, as is now the usual, unfortunately, the Russian Federation from the very early morning tried to uh, do something menacing against us to. Uh, uh, we are without light, without energy, electric power, but uh, without them, though. And these candles are not just the candles of, um, for light, but also for warmth, and also as a symbol of our fight. We'll lead them, uh, lit, uh, lit, lit up those candles. And uh, we would like to thank our armed forces. It's thanks to them that uh, with the very little light that we can have this gathering together. This is an important date. Um, this is our anniversary, 30 years um, exactly on the 17th of December to be exact. The rep office of the President of Ukraine was um, established and the law was adopted after 2014 and that office had to move first to Kherson region and then to uh, for the political, uh, according to the political will of um, uh, the president of Ukraine, we started some now operations at the, at the strategic level and moved to Kiev. Many IDPs know those who come from uh, the Crimea I know that the policy, the Crimean policy, activated with um, Vladimir Zelensky entering the office, and our team and myself. Now, we are the second generation, though we worked um, uh, there. I worked there starting from 2019. Anton Kornevich, Darius Vridova, those are the names, and those were the days. We started together in 2019, and I'm sure that you all remember these colleagues of mine. I would like to thank you personally, every one of you, because together in the interagency cooperation at the expert level, we can indeed implement um, the important policies having to do with the occupation and reintegration of the Crimean Peninsula.
Peninsula. I am not dwelling upon all the detail of our representative office um, operations with Majlis, um, with the Crimean people who had to leave the, the Crimea and those uh, still live in the occupied territories, how we worked. Uh, all those years and how we uh, started anew after the full-scale invasion that started on the 24th of uh, February. I would like to thank all the people in this audience, the uh, rain, the uh, snow, the gems and uh, traffic gems. Um, but you are here, and Eugene is from Yalta, and we have many people on our team who are originally from the Crimea. And um, it's really a, a big um, pain for all of us, and uh, we are trying to invest our soul and mind in this important work um, um, at, um, in, in the middle of this um, event, uh, we'll have the panel discussion, and we'll try on this um, panel to um, explain everything to you. Thank you very much um, again. I'm not uh, discussing all the achievements. This is the law on indigenous people for uh, the occupation reintegration. Um, adopted and enforced by the presidential decree, the Crimean platform that started last year and this year. We continue the whole set of uh, legislative and regulatory initiatives, the presidential decrees. These are all uh, those very important um, uh, drops into the glass which we would like to carry. Uh, to uh, the place of our destination, which is the free Ukrainian Crimea. And our armed forces, thanks to them, to our diplomacy, our military uh, political leadership will uh, be able to celebrate in Simferopol on the, uh, the uh, 31st anniversary. And all the people willing to come back to their homes, um, and um, myself included, will be able to come back. Um, thank you, Tamila, for your kind and words. You were speaking from the heart. I also work for the representative office. I would like to thank Tamila for the synergy and for the opportunity to work together. And this work cannot um, be done without a very important body indeed, a very important institution, and that's uh, the presidential office, deputy head of this office is Igor Zolko. The floor is given to him. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start with the greetings and acknowledgments. Um, uh, these um, winter days, the 90 years of uh, winter, uh, winter of our discontent that we will um, live through and become more uh, integrated and uh, become stronger. This is a very important day. Tomorrow uh, we celebrate the 30th anniversary, uh, to be exact. Tamil, I would like to greet you personally for your efforts and your team and all the people here. Together we are um, also bringing our victory nearer. And um, it's part of our true victory. This is um, the occupation of the Crimea, liberation of the Crimea. The Crimea is um, Ukrainian and always will be. And Tamila was quite modest. And she failed to mention some of the achievements and important ones of that, the strategy for liberation and occupation. From the very important point of its occupation could have been adopted, but it's only with uh, President Zelensky on his initiative, with the Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council, we, that we adopted this strategy. And now we have to do things to liberate the Crimea, that's the international strategy, what the world is supposed to do in order to liberate and deoccupy the Crimea. And when this uh, strategy was adopted, it was just logical to make the following steps. Um, uh, she was uh, very modest again, but um, together with the 
presidential team, we had the first um, Ukrainian platform. Back then, we had it offline in Kyiv. And we all remember how difficult it was at first to invite the leaders. Then the leaders realized uh, what kind of uh, an idea it was and what the summit was about, why we needed that venue, a special international venue for the, the occupation of the Crimea, because before that nobody would mention the occupation, uh, neither the uh, authority, uh, the um, uh, Minsk agreement in Turia, so uh, unfortunate uh, Normandy format. So, uh, we tried to mention that, but the partners would uh, try to change the subject. And let's discuss the occupation in due course. And uh, the Crimean issues. And we have this General Assembly yesterday. It's a uh, kind of routine now, but yesterday, the best result uh, for the uh, support of the General Assembly, our resolution of human rights, 82 uh, countries in favor. <coughs> the ones against it, um, we are not mentioned here, but that was in, wasn't enough again. So the president created the Crimean platform this year. Regardless of the war, we have we have the second side. We are having, and the information was there, and with a greater number, a greater number of the leaders, the UN expert community. And that is why we continue with this platform, this format, and next year we'll have the third summit uh, in next year, it is decided. Now, uh, it's uh, about the venue that we still continue our discussions, and it's about the parliamentary dimension, the parliamentary summit that took place in Croatia, or the initiative of the president can, and with participation of the parliamentary leadership, the unprecedented number, and I attended the summit, and I understand how important it was for Croatia. They never saw so many, such a good number of uh, speakers of the parliament. It's a great place, capital of the country Zagreb, but uh, it had never seen such a number of people talking about the occupation of, of our Crimea. We still have the expert format and we opened a new format this year, the academic format, when academics were discussing different aspects of liberation and existence of the Crimea after the deoccupation, legally, politically, economically, culturally, socially, and this is to be continued, and this is also very important. But in closing, not to trespass on your time and you, I would like to mention another very important idea that is one of the favorite with our president, um, the format of the Crimean platform. Well, this is not just about the occupation of the Crimea. This is about the occupation of all the territories of all the countries currently occupied by the Russian aggressor. Still occupied. And this is uh, some Moldovan territory, this is some Georgian territory, some northern territories. And now support and the work we do together, our um, common uh, destination is um, uh, the occupation of all the territories. Thank you very much. Greetings again, and I wish you a very fruitful event indeed. Before we turn the floor for uh, address to our next speaker, we have to mention our initiative that we started for the 30th anniversary of our web office, and it will become known very soon. And together with the Ukrainian Pravda International Fund to Come Back Alive, we have um, we are fundraising. Um, we need 10 million for the supporters of uh, the 10th uh, Saki Aviation uh, Brigade and in joint efforts. Uh, I hope that we'll uh, be able to bring them back to uh, their favorite uh, and native airport in, at Novo Federovka in the Crimea. Now, next speaker is Secretary of the National Security Defense Council, Alexei Daniel. Good evening, dear friends. Uh, uh, something changed 
in, uh, with our tradition. Uh, the uh, elders have uh, to first, uh, have the first to say, like Mustafa here. I think he was supposed to start our meeting, in my book at least, because we are just friends and like-minded people have something to do with the group. <laughs> with the Crimea starting from 1977. But um, let me say just two things. Uh, when I was um, um, providing my greetings uh, for Mustafa, he promised um, on his on the occasions of his birthday, many happy returns of the day, he promised um, that uh, we would celebrate his next birthday in the Crimea. So he has to keep his promise. Another thing about this person, when on the 24th of February the open aggression started, almost every day for the first two weeks, for the fortnight, the most difficult we had to remain standing back then, and we had conversations every day. I'm very grateful to everyone. Uh, every one of you, you know, uh, Mustafa, uh, what I'm talking about, but I'm sure that the words that uh, men uh, give, they, the men keep. And um, here uh, we have a person who uh, assures us that uh, it's not a joke, that um, he will defend uh, the uh, what he took. And we also uh, see no joke in it, and we will liberate the Crimea. So I would like to greet you on this occasion of the 30th anniversary. And uh, I wish you the best, all the best and, uh, in this in your endeavors. Thank you very much. I will be helping all of us uh, come back to our Ukrainian economy. Um, uh, we have some challenges with the power supply, but despite of that, we're, we're going to have a panel discussion when we have it here. We will have this space. Uh, um, this uh, uh, this is um, our Simferopol office, uh, and we will be in the patio of our. Uh, Simferopol office. So let's uh, uh, get um, conditioned for that. And uh, another important speaker is Vice Prime Minister on reintegration of temporarily occupied territories, Irina Vereshchuk. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you, Tamila, um, dear friends, um, dear guests. We have great cooperation indeed. We have a lot of uh, achievements, ideas, proposals. And indeed, I understand um, the uh, importance of the crime. It's a cornerstone. And Russia is also very much aware of that. And so we are trying to convince, persuade Russia with our um, real activities for our deeds uh, and results that the Crimea is uh, Ukraine. No matter how, how hard they try to um, prove otherwise, like Kissinger today. Came up with uh, yet another proposal to hold a referendum. We understand pretty well that Russia is using, exploiting uh, the Crimea as its military base. They've never uh, thought of developing uh, that area. Economically, politically, the eco side, uh, ethno side is what they are doing to the local population, to the um, natural environment. They don't need water for the people, for the sake of uh, the population. They needed it for the sake of their military. They've turned uh, this um, peninsula into a military facility in the very center of uh, Europe, uh, just for the purposes of uh, the war that they are prosecuting against us. Their plans are all about the war, the war in Europe, the war in the world. And uh, we see that there are international leaders who understand that pretty well. We have a lot of uh, allies and friends, and uh, I understand that there would be people with a different position, but 
our people, uh, Crimean uh, Tatars and other indigenous peoples of Crimea, our army, uh, will uh, have a say in deoccupation and reintegration of uh, the Crimea, and we will be uh, doing that uh, in full compliance with the international law, including international humanitarian and human rights law. We are entitled to that. We do have the right, and we will fight for this right. Uh, I would like to thank everyone, uh, Mustafa Aga, uh, Rifat Aga, um, people that you represent. Uh, we would be doing our best to help the people who are still there and suffer from um, press ganging. Uh, we will help them to um, leave uh, the Crimea. We will provide them with uh, the documents because it is about saving their lives. Uh, they want to be on our side and to fight together with our armed forces. We should be remembering about political prisoners and support their families. And I would like to thank uh, Tamila and her team who do a lot to uh, support those families. 427 uh, persons who have been arrested and imprisoned uh, still get uh, assistance from the Ukrainian government. Their family members uh, get this assistance. And I would uh, pay respect to those who perished in this war. Putin does not um, uh, let up uh, the fight. Uh, and we remember those who stood up to his uh, criminal regime uh, back in 2014 and are still fighting together with us. So uh, this war cannot be over unless and until uh, the Crimea is deoccupied and becomes Ukrainian again. Unfortunately, the reintegration, uh, deoccupation and reintegration strategy um, did not include the military uh, retake of uh, the Crimea. We were looking for diplomatic and other peaceful ways uh, to bring the Crimea into the Ukrainian fold again, but uh, they have not uh, left us any other option but to fight for it militarily. So glory to Ukraine. Thank you, Irina, for um, your resilience and uh, determination. And we are moving together to our common victory. I'll uh, tell you a story, if I may. Uh, Tamila said that I come from Yalta. Uh, most of my family also come from uh, Yalta. And I uh, often recollect how much much I love uh, the waterfront um, in uh, Yalta and how much I love uh, modern Ukrainian music that uh, used to sa uh, sound there every day. I remember how happy we were when um, some of our artists and performers uh, won the European um, Song Contest um, this year and uh, back in 2015. So I would like to introduce to you a person that I dreamt of uh, meeting uh, for a long time, and uh, my dream has come true. So um, please meet uh, songwriter, uh, singer, and performer Jamala. Give her a round of applause, please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum, Rifataga, Mustafaga. It is my great pleasure to be with you here today. Each oh, and every of us uh, has its own contribution to make into our common cause. We have to bring our former life back, our uh, nights and uh, conversations in our own homes. And uh, I will announce uh, several um, times the uh, action to support the 10 Saki Naval Aviation Brigade. Uh, those are the people thanks to whom we can meet here peacefully and uh, discuss matters at hand. I encourage you to support our fighters 
and uh, collect the necessary money and raise the necessary sum. And I will contribute the thing that I treasure most. What can, can it be? Your uh, crystal microphone? No, the Kalash Orchestra did that already. No, that's the thing that I used to write music uh, for 10 years. 1944, uh, the song of mine, the uh, winning song, actually was written there. Uh, a lot of my uh, albums were written thanks to it. Uh, and I'm contributing my warmest memories in order to create new ones back in Crimea. Thank you very much. I hope that we will raise this amount of money to support our fighters, our defenders. Thank you very much, Jamala. This is a very valuable lot that Jamala contributes to the auction, and later today we will be discussing the terms and conditions of this auction that we would be uh, co-hosting with Ukrainska Pravda uh, newspaper and um, come back a live uh, charity. I would like to thank you for being with us for the support of the the uh, rep office um, and for our common fight to liberate all of our territories. And I will give the floor now to an MP, head of uh, the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine's delegation to um, Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, Ms. Maria Mezenseva. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, dear friends, uh, Your Excellencies, colleagues, uh, representatives of the Crimean Tatar people. Neither sleet nor uh, rain, uh, nor the absence of um, electricity or heating would stop us uh, from liberating our beloved uh, Crimea. And uh, Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe was mentioned. I would like to share wonderful news with you. Within the next three years, the Council of Europe would allocate 50 million euros to support our activities uh, towards the liberation of Crimea uh, and our activities, uh, joint activities with representatives of the Crimean Tatar people. And uh, this has been um, confirmed by Secretary General of the Parliamentary Assembly. We see that uh, the Crimea is a common cause for many people in the world, and the initiative of the Special Tribunal for the Crime of Aggression was first uh, murdered uh, in um, March 2022, and it was uh, re repeated um, uh, this year a bit later, and we understand that the Crimea will um, figure as a central point of this um, uh, tribunal, because those who order to occupy, to annex it illegally, to conduct all of those crimes on the territory of our country should be punished. It would not happen tomorrow or even down uh, the uh, down the road, uh, uh, say, a year from today, but it will happen. No crime will go unpunished. And we uh, will uh, continue uh, teaching the Russian um, military and teaching the Russian leadership that Crimean Tatars are not a minority. They are indigenous people in uh, the Crimea, and we will be protecting and defending all indigenous people in Crimea, in Ukraine, nations and ethnic groups, uh, their rights, and uh, as, uh, as the aggression started in the Crimea, so uh, it will end there as well. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Uh, 
So, of course, all of us would like to celebrate their uh, anniversary uh, in uh, their ancestral home in uh, the Crimea. And this is the dream uh, voiced by Mustafa Agar, leader of Crimean Tatar people. He is a member of Ukrainian parliament, Mr. Mustafa Jamilev. The floor is yours. Dear friends, dear guests, 30 years ago, on the 17th of December, the representative office of uh, the president of Ukraine in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea was set up. That was extremely important, not only because it was the only autonomous republic within uh, the um, state of Ukraine, but uh, we all understand that uh, the Crimea has always been a special region in Ukraine. Once it was uh, uh, called uh, the time of uh, the the uh, seat of communists, then the seat of chauvinists, and we had uh, various separatist uh, sentiments there in different times of our history. Up to 90% of uh, the population there were uh, Russian speakers. And they were the ancestors of those who uh, came uh, and settled there uh, from the Russian Federation. And it was essential for the Russian leaders uh, to have their agents there to keep an eye on uh, the local population so that uh, they would never stand up to the Russian oppression. And. Uh, even after uh, Ukraine gained its independence, uh, the um, government appointed very dubious uh, persons uh, to lead the um, Peninsula. First, it was Grabati. Now he uh, is a convicted criminal. Out of 20 uh, appointed officials, representatives of a president uh, to the Crimean Autonomous Republic, uh, very few were decent people. And no one could even dream of having a representative of um, the indigenous people uh, as a presidential uh, representative there. So uh, particularly during the Yanukovych reign, Crimean Tatars were deemed uh, as a threat to the territorial integrity of uh, Ukraine. Uh, but what followed uh, actually um, cost um, light on uh, who was the true uh, patriot of uh, the Crimean Autonomous Republic. Uh, the representative office is an extremely important element of public administration and of our fight for the return of uh, the peninsula into the Ukrainian state. I would like to thank um, Tamila for what uh, she's uh, done so far and uh, the people who preceded you. Um, Mr. Karinevich was uh, also uh, a very uh, proficient and a very effective um, uh, representative um, during his uh, tenure. And the role of your office uh, after deoccupation will uh, be even uh, larger and more uh, essential. Quite recently, I heard someone say uh, that uh, we would we would uh, liberate uh, Kherson uh, by the end of October, and it happened indeed in early November. Uh, now people keep saying that uh, the Crimea will be liberated sometime in uh, the summer, and so we believe. Tamila, uh, I um, congratulate you and your team on this anniversary, and I wish you fruitful work towards uh, deoccupation of Ukrainian Crimea. Thank you, Mr. Haga. Shall we give a round of applause to Mustafa Haga yet again? Thank you. 
Before we um, invite our panelists for the panel discussion, I would like to um, spe specifically thank uh, some people for support of Ukraine and their um, attention to the situation in uh, Crimea. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Valdemar Serapinas, um, Ambassador of Lithuanian Republic to Ukraine. Ambassador of Latvian Republic in Brussels, Klau. Of Estonian Republic, Mr. Kaima Kuska. Of the Republic of Croatia, Anica Jomic. And uh, Republic of Slovenia, Tomasz Mencin. As well as the uh, diplomats from uh, Turkish Republic and Slovak Republic. And, of course, diplomats who represent the USA. Thank you all, Your Excellencies and esteemed diplomats. Are we prepared to move on? Yes, we are. So uh, we can uh, kickstart the panel discussion. You received um, postcards. Please send them to either your own home addresses or to those of your friends in uh, the Crimea. You can uh, see the edifice of uh, the representative office in the city of Simferopol. Um, so that is important, isn't it? And now we will have a panel discussion on achievements and challenges on uh, our road towards liberated three Ukrainian Crimea. And I will give the floor to the moderator coming from uh, the Crimea. Um, she is uh, editor-in-chief of the Ukrainska Pravda newspaper, um, Sevgil Musayev. Uh, dear friends, uh, good evening. I would like to greet uh, Tamila, greet uh, uh, the representative office of the president in the Crimea, and wish that our next birthday we celebrate in the Crimea, and the same kind of discussion with the results, with the achievements we discuss in your uh, home um, uh, on the premises. Uh, uh, we can see. The picture here, there's the QR code, uh, and you uh, can make your contribution without leaving this room. So what is the matter in hand? What uh, should we discuss now? I remember how it all started with the Crimea and was supposed to end there. And I remember uh, with Tamila and Alim, uh, who founded the Crimea SOS. We worked and lived with that since 2014. Sometimes people would look on us uh, as um, um, crazy, but now it's uh, a uh, commonplace, and uh, we all believe that the next year can meet in the Crimea, and the chances are growing, regardless of how difficult the victory can be to achieve, and already is. I can see some skepticism in terms of the humanitarian aspect, reintegration, and whether Ukraine has any plan. This comes from some international partners, and the point of this discussion is to discuss a plan. Do we have a plan? A plan? We, yes, we have it. With the territory, with the people, with the... Um, transitional justice and what will happen in, uh, in the Crimea after we will bring, uh, we bring it back. I would like to ask um, Alexei Daniel to join this discussion. 
Irina Verešiuk, Vice Prime Minister, Minister on Reintegration Temporary Occupied Territories, Alexandra Zarachina from the Crimea Deputy, Minister, Tamila Tashova, and this event would be impossible, would have been impossible without her. And uh, you know her title, and Rifat Chubarov, it's my pleasure to invite him, head of Medjlis of the Crimean Party people, Igor prosecutor of the Crimean prosecutor's office, uh, chief prosecutor in exile, and the director of uh, Human Rights Center Change, Smina Olena Lunyova. Perhaps we should start with you, Alexis, because you're the um, uh, you're next to me, sitting next to me. And we would like all of us would like to bring the Crimea back. We can see that uh, uh, in the uh, social, uh, in the surveys that we, uh, the polls that we had of lately, uh, in reintegration, the occupation of the Crimea is um, about security, national security, but there is this skepticism. Uh, there are some uh, articles uh, expressing it, and how can we overcome this? Uh, how can we prove them wrong? Um, when they say that you have no plan, let me say that uh, there is another thing uh, very important for us. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, our country should uh, be a, a NATO member. That's Kissinger, uh, that Kissinger uh, never was known uh, as a supporter uh, of the Russian universe uh, before, so thank, uh, now he's talking about difficulties, not actually his place to talk about such things. Now, uh, it will uh, come, uh, uh, come back to um, the situation in December 2019. I said, that because our president went to Paris and broke all the formats as a president of a big country. And that was the beginning. That was the incept. And the inception. And um, unfortunately, it's very unfortunate. The world for some years has worked, uh, lived in the undercapped democracy with some kind of understandings, arrangements. Uh, and that paradigm was also broken. He is um, in very much in favor. Of public democracy, he is a great champion of it, um, and um, uh, he is um, very much um, in favor of um, consulting the society and taking heed of what, what the society has to say. Partners helping us, we appreciate they have him, but if they can manage to convince us that it should be under the carpets, uh, that um, um, would be the end of it. So uh, we have to stick to open democracy, speaking of the plans. We have a plan, we do, and we can say what we're talking about, our constitution, our territories. Um, and of course, um, we uh, will listen to our advisors, but uh, it's our decision. Um, we have to support and implement and enforce, if necessary, our constitution, which outlines the territories that we are responsible for. If the Crimea is liberated, some people say that um, if it is not liberated, it will stay a um, um, factor of danger uh, and insecurity for the whole Black Sea region. Thanks to your outlet, um, I managed to publish an article on the prospects. Uh, uh, unless the Russian Federation fails them, the world will stay in a very anxious, undefined, and insecure state. Uh, because, uh, uh, 
more than Hitler in three to five years will appear for sure in this situation, can be certain. This is not going to be just a tragedy, but a disaster for uh, the countries that, that will have to do with the Russian Federation. And we have to be very much aware of that. Alexei, what's the plan of bringing the Crimea back? Uh, is it, should it be peaceful? Uh, or otherwise, it depends on many uh, circumstances. On the 12th of April, you probably remember we had this correspondence of what was uh, happening to the ship called Moscow. Moscow. And what was happening to it, you asked me. And I said, um, everything fine. Thank God for that. It sank. She sank. And um, uh, Moscow, the big one, uh, the namesake, will uh, go down. And that's, that's the only destination they deserve. And we can be satisfied with uh, Thank you for uh, your ministry this year um, has uh, faced uh, many challenges, the evacuation corridors, uh, helping uh, people uh, in the temporarily occupied territories. But you have to think about the reintegration, reintegration of the Crimea. What has been done there, and what kind of uh, challenges do you see? Well, uh, we have a strategy um, and uh, on the uh, 31st of March, uh, the President signed uh, a special decree. We understand that integration the way it was, the vision, uh, oh, sorry, on the 21st of March, it uh, has to be changed. Now we are working on some update and adoption. Naturally, we had to reinforce the component, and I was talking about it um, earlier, uh, for those people who would like to leave the Crimea. We realized that we will need time for that, the human resources, and our ministry, it's 9-11, uh, used to work on reintegration, some strategic uh, uh, more, more formal projects and objectives because it was never about any military the occupation but economic political diplomatic instead now it's all different and alona and um, all the colleagues here we have um, conferences every day uh, on the IDPs coming from the Crimea, and we are focused on the practical side of this. And um, like um, emergency, and uh, uh, the Crimea SOS, uh, just uh, think about it, how much has been done. And with Donbass, the, it is um, um, impossible to overstate uh, lots of people, lots of proposals. I would like to thank everyone. You have this great um, expertise. You have uh, this great experience. You have the ready-made solutions. My point is that we have, um, with all the ministries, we have to do it very quickly indeed with the instructions and all the necessary changes for the legislation. Talking about the strategy as a deliverable, it is being finalized now, but you asked our colleague Mr. Secretary about the plan. There is a plan. It includes many components at many levels, the local, regional, central, and also international, the Crimean platform. What a great project it is. And um, everyone, Maria, Rifat, all the people who are presenting this international dimension, we're implementing the solutions um, and proposals thanks to the embassies, the diplomats, um, the countries, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, but what a voice, what a joint voice of so the three countries and the ones who joined them, joined the chorus. That's the pivotal problem, the Crimean 
problem has been around for centuries now, so we have to put an end to it, and that's for our generation to accomplish. Another thing, recently, from one diplomat I had this idea that Ukraine would encounter the humanitarian challenge because there are many Russians there, and what can we possibly do with those people? What would you answer to this? Well, for those who, who suggest a referendum, we had uh, the um, ideas um, when, when Russia, for example, we say, let's uh, um, consider the uh, state of affairs of 1991. You recognized our independence. You signed the agreements in 2003, the law on national border, the Crimea included in our territory. So let's face the reality. That's the reality we would like to face. In 2014, at least, we had uh, some reality, and that will be a matter for discussions. We have to pave our own way, because there is no experience we can not stand on anybody's shoulders. There was um, this uh, post-war experience of Germany. For some years, they had no elections, because they did not um, and expect any reliable results. The wars, the conflicts, not um, on good terms with reality. And uh, I have no ready answer for this uh, question. The humanitarian problem and what kind of a problem? Because we also now have this humanitarian problem. We should not be weak. Those people who say that um, the military solution is not a solution. What about 2014 and the North Stream 2? That never worked. And um, we have to find our own solution. And we shall, based on the international humanitarian law, with all the conventions, understanding the simple fact that people live there different people, the time is up, the time has passed, but we are in the state, we are Ukraine, and our territories, Ukrainian people are citizens of um, Ukraine, they are our nationals, they get mobilized. Also, the Crimean Tatars, and that led to this uh, forced deportation wave. Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. We remember the strategy very, the tragedy sort of very well. What has been done in that department? I would like to thank the Majlis Rifat who is um, um, coordinating this communication with the people using his um, authority, his background, his reputation. We have the coordination staff. I'm in charge every Thursday with Alon and Rifat and uh, all the stakeholders, attorneys at law, of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and we are working on the regulations. Some uh, we have adopted and the legislation, the law to apply the administrative procedure, you know that that's what we are doing. There is a lot to be done. Every case is separate, is uh, children born in the occupied Crimea, the certificates um, which cannot um, be recognized because they are not legal. But Majlis is collecting all this evidence, all this intelligence, information. They put it together, make it systemic. The advocates and Latvia is the uh, Estonia. <laughs> Uh, and uh, they uh, uh, Poland, uh, there are other partners who take um, much care 
interests of the Ukrainians in the Russian Federation should be represented by some consular services, some diplomatic corps, uh, Switzerland. Uh, for Switzerland, this was denied, and we are looking for some option for Ukrainians to escape this um, criminal mobilization. Thank you, Irina Alexandra. You from the Crimea. I have referred to this um, circumstance of the Ukrainian railways of Kruzovznitsa. And, um, uh, the trains of victory and the tickets uh, have been issued in Kiev Simferopol. Uh, uh, tickets um, and also developments to Yalta. Yalta is uh, a bit uh, less uh, easy to imagine. And Kerch. And I have bought a ticket. I am not asking when I will be able to use it. Uh, hopefully soon. But uh, your ministry uh, during this year, what have they been doing? doing for integration the occupied um, communion. I'm not talking about uh, the uh, railway loan, but the mind uh, sea, the Azov Sea. We are not talking about it yet. Thank you very much. In fact, uh, the mission of our ministry it has a long name, but we call the Ministry of Recovery. And uh, the, uh, all the material means uh, that we can lay our hands upon would like to uh, engage to reconnect uh, the Crimea with the mainland Ukraine in a way uh, that should operate uh, in a sovereign state. The uh, referendum that they put up in the Crimean back in 2014 uh, reflected the state because the Crimea was an island. Uh, like uh, Chernivtsi, like Rupunitsky, many other regions of Ukraine um, separated even in, by way of transport or trans connection, disconnect. And uh, we understand that, unfortunately, this war, war is an unfortunate affair, but uh, fortunately it has uh, reunited us so with the representative office. So we worked on the uh, vision uh, for the after the occupation period, the legal status, the ownership, and we are talking about this uh, train to Yalta. And it's not just about Ukraine getting its uh, southern gate, but this is about coming back to normalcy, to normality, where the Crimea is a legally recognized and accommodated territory. Again, Majlis, I would like to mention in this connection, for 13 years, I was, when I was 13, this is, Simferopol, uh, the uh, Orange Revolution, and um, Winter Storm. And I was in the staff of our country. I found myself there. And uh, I uh, was uh, brought up a Russian speaking girl. We used textbooks, manuals published in Moscow. And it was the first time that I understood who I. Uh, should trust uh, on the peninsula, who I uh, should respect there. I remember the buses who took us to the headquarters, and I remember being hated even by the guards in the office. And uh, I was just a teenager, and I was uh, struck at that time with the revelation of the truth. And after the occupation, I was offended, and I uh, had some uh, malice feelings towards uh, Crimea because it uh, was incapable of protecting itself. 
Uh, now the situation is totally different. We understand that what they respect there is just the force and the might. And now we've got this might. And uh, the deoccupation of Crimea is, first of all, not about the railway connectivity, but about the restoration of the truth. And we do have allies all over the world. And the people who uh, tell the truth will uh, always be united and will prevail in the end. And I have prepared a lot of slides, but I don't think it is the uh, proper time to show them. Uh, we will be telling you about uh, the uh, transportation networks there. Uh, what about the demining de of the uh, shoreline? Uh, yeah, uh, we will do that uh, like this. Uh, but. Yeah, we we are developing some solutions as we speak, and uh, uh, we have got the necessary intelligence, uh, uh, but uh, we still lack a very clear understanding of what's going on there, demographically, economically, uh, etc. So we can observe some trends uh, over the. Uh, last uh, eight years, but what we see is the denial of any private initiative, environmental standards, uh, political and human rights standards. We hope that uh, we will bring all of that back. Now, speaking about uh, intelligence, it's uh, the question for uh, Mr. Budanov, but we um, uh, developed a model of safe and secure deconstruction of uh, the Russian reign in in uh, the Crimea. Uh, Tamila, I would like to give the floor to you now. There is uh, this Crimean platform in place and plans to reintegrate the Crimea, uh, but every time Tamila um, publishes certain columns in the Ukrainian uh, Pravda, we receive a lot of feedback from uh, Crimea with lots of hate speech. And uh, we should take that into account, and we have to to respond to it somehow, to uh, make amends with what we did wrong before, uh, before the 2014. So what is uh, the focus of the changes that have to be introduced there? Irina Vereshuk has responded to this question uh, in part. Indeed, we've uh, got this 2021 strategy of uh, deoccupation and reintegration, then the uh, action plan was uh, developed. Um, it needs to be revised now, and the strategy should be uh, revisited again. But uh, in uh, uh, pursuit of uh, the uh, instruction by the president, we've started cooperating with all of the stakeholders in developing this step by step deoccupation plan, a very detailed one, a roadmap, if you wish. And um, when you asked uh, Ms. Vereshchuk uh, about uh, the situation with the Russian, um, re Russian residents and Russian citizens, uh, I had a special column dedicated to this topic, and uh, that's when I received a lot of negative feedback. But we understand that all those who settled down in the Crimea after 2014 um, have violated Ukrainian legislation and they will have to leave because uh, they pose a threat to our sovereignty. Um, so because they uh, came to the occupied peninsula. Of course, there should be some carve-outs, um, and I gave uh, several examples. For example, uh, for, for instance, a um, family of a Crimean uh, political prisoner whose uh, wife was in the process of obtaining Ukrainian uh, citizenship um, in 2014. Her husband was arrested and then imprisoned, and she did not have enough time to acquire, to obtain this citizenship. So this should be treated on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis. And there are, um, for example, um, legal councils uh, who represent um, 
Crimean Tatars who are political prisoners. Uh, they have come to Crimea illegally, uh, if we look at it from the optics of the Ukrainian legislation, but they helped our citizens. So we will have to take all of that into account. We've made mistakes, that's true, and we have, as I said, to uh, correct them. And we know that uh, the Russian Federation issued lots of uh, its passports in uh, the Crimea even prior to 2014. And this also has uh, to be addressed in the deoccupation strategy. The Russian passports that were distributed and were gladly received by uh, Ukrainian citizens in Sevastopol, for example. So we are now addressing these issues. We are also uh, l working on accountability issues. A lot of people in the Crimea are work for uh, occupying authorities, different bodies thereof. Uh, not all of them actually promoted uh, the occupying regime uh, there, but they are part of the occupying authorities. So uh, we are, uh, again, um, going to address this issue to see whether they should be made liable, should be brought to justice or not. So we have to um, develop very clear criteria uh, for every case so uh, what should uh, who should be vetted uh, who should not uh, be allowed to uh, occupy any positions in power um, those who committed uh, crimes against uh, humanity or war crimes, the crimes of genocide, who violated human rights, of course, uh, they cannot be subject to any amnesty whatsoever. Uh, so uh, they would not be vetted, uh, but they will be prosecuted in a uh, criminal uh, um, procedures. Uh, but there would be people who worked uh, in uh, some institutions of power without violating human rights, without promoting the establishment of the occupier um, there. So uh, still they should know what type of accountability or responsibility uh, would uh, lie ahead of them. So I receive a lot of uh, letters uh, to this effect from the Crimea, requests for information people um, are thirsty to uh, have this uh, information uh, in place. And that's what we are doing uh, right now, what we've been doing for three years now. We've been uh, developing some framework solutions that would uh, underlie uh, the uh, upcoming legislation. So the Rep Office has um, links with the people who are still Ukrainian citizens but reside in uh, the Crimea. Uh, how um, have their sentiments, uh, attitudes uh, changed since uh, the all-out war uh, was unleashed uh, against Ukraine? The public sentiment has changed. The resistance movement is there, and we have to speak about it loud and clear. We have to get this message across uh, to the people in mainland Ukraine, and we have to communicate with those people. Irina Barishuk has mentioned it. I hope that Rifat Aga will uh, elaborate on that uh, in greater detail uh, after the uh, large-scale invasion, um, a lot of people uh, left, but some still reside there. We are monitoring the so-called uh, judicial registers uh, of, the, uh, of uh, the Russian authorities there. So, and then uh, there's this uh, article uh, for this uh, discrediting the armed forces of Russian Federation all for fake news, and a lot of people were prosecuted under such uh, criminal articles. Uh, at least 200 people have suffered. Uh, they have put resistance in various forms to this occupation, to the large-scale invasion, uh, let alone 150 uh, political prisoners who are now um, behind bars in either uh, the Crimea or in the Russian Federation, 109 of them Crimean Tatars. But now I'm speaking about people who put up resistance
happens uh, after the 24th of February. Alexander Perapont, who uh, distributed leaflets and one of um, the pictures on our action uh, um, is dedicated to this issue. Then Bogdan Ziskin, who uh, was not uh, engaged in activism uh, before the 24th February, now he has been arrested and he is uh, facing a trial uh, for using uh, yellow and uh, blue uh, paint uh, to smear the plaque on Yevpatoria uh, uh, public administration or um, city administration. Uh, when people ask me why there was no active resistance back in 2014, I usually answer it's not true because there was such resistance. But uh, in addition to that, I should mention that uh, back in 2014, our citizens in the Crimea did not have a strong army, the strong armed forces behind them, nor did they have the uh, strong powers uh, that be in uh, Kiev, because it was the time when uh, the Ukrainian state was still weak, was reeling from uh, the um, fallouts of the revolution of dignity. And uh, now people understand that there are those in the main uh, land who will provide support to them. And we see that people in the Crimea are looking forward to deoccupation and liberation. Speaking about the resistance movement, one should always uh, mention the Crimean Tatar people and political prisoners in particular. Rifat Aga, over the uh, almost nine years of occupation, uh, the Crimean Tatars have been putting up this resistance. Majlis has been uh, deemed a terrorist organization and uh, their activities have been uh, interdicted uh, there. We see a lot of uh, political prisoners. We see the large-scale forced deportation. We see the uh, destruction of uh, cultural uh, uh, cultural uh, facilities and sacred places, uh, sanctuaries uh, for the Crimean uh, Tatars, in particular the Han uh, Palace in Bakhchisarai. Uh, we uh, know uh, that a lot of Crimean Tatars um, left uh, Crimea back in 2014. Many have followed suit uh, over these um, nine years. Uh, so what can the Majlis do to uh, restore the activities of their uh, representation bodies uh, after the deoccupation. Thank you very much. I would like to highlight some of the uh, issues that have already been raised, and uh, I will raise some additional ones. I would like to thank all of you for coming and for heeding this event. Uh, we've been uh, speaking about the deoccupation of Crimea. No one of uh, those present here uh, doubts that. So, uh, but not only uh, are we liberating uh, territories or deoccupying territories, we are liberating people, hundreds of thousands of those who uh, did not bend uh, their knee to the occupiers, uh, those who never doubted that uh, state sovereignty of Ukraine will be restored in Crimea. These are Crimean Tatars, uh, other uh, indigenous people of uh, the Crimea, uh, Russians and Ukrainians who feel that they they are part of this political nation of Ukraine, and we will restore um, uh, this uh, uh, sovereignty not for a year, not for two or for a decade, but uh, forever and ever after. And uh, we should understand how the Crimea would be developing as part of the independent Ukrainian state. I would not uh, deliver a long lecture to you uh, now. Uh, we know what uh, Ukraine failed to do within 23 years of its independence till 2014, as some of you mentioned there. And one of the reasons uh, of setting of the rep office of the Ukrainian president in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea was not just about the special status of the peninsula and the Autonomous Republic, but also of uh, 
certain uh, threats uh, that loomed uh, in uh, the Crimea uh, with regard to uh, the uh, Ukrainian authority and sovereignty there. So we will have uh, more opportunities uh, to discuss not only uh, history, not only our past mistakes, but also uh, looking forward, we will uh, discuss uh, the potential and essential role of the rep office in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea after the uh, occupation. The working group that uh, drafted three bills focused on developing parameters and algorithms for the development of uh, the Ukrainian uh, Crimea. So uh, now I'm speaking about the law on uh, indigenous people, on uh, amendments to the constitution, on, on the status of the Crimean Tatar people. And uh, the uh, bill on amending the constitution reflects our uh, own vision of Crimea with special status in the Ukrainian state, but we should be um, very frank here, uh, and you mentioned this uh, word, uh, fairness and uh, justice. So we should be looking at the sources and the essence of the autonomy of the Crimea. So when we were drafting the amendments to the Constitution, we provided for a special role of the rep office of the President of Ukraine in the Autonomous Republic of uh, Crimea and a special mechanism I would like to underscore for the restoring of the rights of the indigenous people uh, uh, there through establishing true equality for all residents of that peninsula. And it was a well-agreed approach, I would uh, like to say. So not only are we restoring the rights of the indigenous people, but we are insisting on the equal rights of all other ethnic groups residing in Crimea in uh, the governance at the peninsula. I would uh, not now um, disclose all of the details of uh, those mechanisms, but when we uh, discussed um, these ideas with the newly elected uh, President uh, Zelensky back in 1920, uh, sorry, 19, uh, Mr. Faga, myself, and some other representatives of the Majlis, uh, the President said, let us uh, move still Step by step. Let's start with the uh, uh, law on indigenous people. And the president uh, actually uh, lived up to his promise uh, 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 that he gave back in uh, 2019. Now, now we've uh, been cooperating with the presidential office and with uh, other factions within parliament on uh, the bill on the status of Crimean Tatar people. And uh, I am sure that very soon we would be prepared. Uh, uh, to uh, put on the table the bill on uh, um, constitutional amendments with regard to the Autonomous Republic of Crimea and its uh, status. We all understand the importance of this issue. Some people say that it should uh, be in the status of a, uh, a region as any other uh, in uh, in Ukraine, uh, but those are in a minority. And uh, now I can uh, see how the aggressor country responds to all of those legislative in, uh, initiatives. Not a single bill was so um, so uh, reviled as uh, the three bills pertaining to the Autonomous Republic of uh, Crimea. Um, so Putin uh, spoke three times about the inacceptability of uh, what uh, Parliament uh, did uh, in uh, Ukraine. And uh, State Duma and the Russian Federation even made a, an official statement to this effect. So now we should be thinking about the uh, legal support to the development of Crimean autonomy. And uh, the correctness of this approach should be 
understood and seen not only by those who live in, in the Crimea, and people there, uh, believe me, are following uh, these developments very closely. They are listening to each word uh, that uh, we say, and they are following the progress of uh, the armed forces of Ukraine at the battlefield, again, very closely, hoping uh, to uh, welcome them soon in the Crimea. But we understand that there is a part of the population that are still uh, very scared, uh, panicked, that would not welcome uh, the occupation of the Crimea. I will take uh, two more minutes of your time, because that's essential, I believe, that um, uh, the Mejlis, uh, uh, Tamila's uh, team, and uh, representatives of uh, uh, the uh, Crimean Tatars will uh, be in Strasbourg uh, soon, talking to uh, um, uh, Maria Bechinovich Bucic, uh, Secretary General of the Council of Europe, and we will be speaking about the situation of Crimean Tatars and people residing currently in the Crimea. The uh, promotion and protection of uh, human rights in uh, the Crimea is very essential, but uh, we have to remove the factors that prevent uh, the respect of human rights. Uh, foreigners and uh, stateless people there, 99% um, uh, living there are Russian uh, citizens who have settled in uh, Crimea since 2014. They are accomplices in this uh, war crime uh, because with their actions they are trying to enhance and uh, strengthen uh, the um, authority and the rule of the Russian Federation in uh, the Crimea. Uh, I will, will be speaking on behalf of the Crimean uh, Tatars. We cannot uh, survive what happened to us 32 or 33 years ago. Um, so I remember my conversation with uh, President Kravchuk uh, in his office uh, when he said, uh, for you to get your rights back, you have to uh, have more people living in Crimea because you are very, uh, very few there. But it is not a valid argument. We cannot uh, allow 600,000 people or a million of um, Russian citizens who um, have come to Crimea to abuse uh, our rights and prevent us from from being able to breathe freely there in our homeland. That's exactly what ha happened to us uh, for centuries when we were squeezed out of our peninsula. And I'm sure that we will be uh, speaking about it in Strasbourg. We um, discuss these issues in uh, the Midlist office in Kiev in May, and I'm sure that we will be raising these issues in Strasbourg again. Quite recently, I had a tour of uh, the Baltic uh, states. Um, unfortunately, I uh, didn't have the time to visit Tallinn, but I was in Vilnius and in Riga, spoke to esteemed presidents of those uh, two uh, countries, and I profusely thanked uh, those uh, countries for their support of the Crimean Tatar people for uh, the recognition of uh, the deportation of 1944 as the genocide of the Crimean Tatar uh, people by the Soviet uh, government. And uh, I know that those uh, states have uh, extremely important and valid experience of recovering after colonization by the Soviet, uh, uh, Soviet state. And they were um, happy to uh, actually uh, break away from uh, that empire and regain their independence and live as they uh, themselves see fit. So uh, I uh, am sure that uh, those citizens uh, of the Russian Federation should uh, 
leave uh, Ukra uh, Ukrainian Crimea after uh, the deoccupation. So, of course, uh, we will be considering some of the um, exceptional cases, but those would not uh, be uh, that numerous. We are speaking dozens or hundreds, not millions. Now, the Russian propaganda is trying to uh, smear uh, the uh, behavior of uh, people in Crimea, feeling that they will have to uh, run away from there uh, for good. And I encourage all of you, and I call on all of you, uh, Merz Avrishuk, I would like to use this opportunity to talk to you directly here. Uh, to be using all of the tools available to us very carefully with very good uh, thinking put into it. Uh, Tamila, I uh, know that you met with uh, the uh, Crimean Tatars uh, recently. Um, now, people understand that we are living through the war times. People uh, are quite uh, aware of that. But we should uh, put special effort uh, to uh, support uh, the uh, broadcasters like ATR and other outlets um, uh, speaking on broadcasting in uh, the Crimean Tatar language because uh, they've been fined by uh, the Russian Federation, and if they fail to pay the fine very soon, then they will have uh, huge problems with broadcasting next year. I think we can meet on Monday and discuss uh, these pressing issues uh, very, very soon and timely. Now, uh, we've got Igor, who uh, has been in charge of uh, the prosecutor's uh, office in Crimea in exile, and uh, over the whole period of uh, the Crimean occupation, uh, you've been um, investigating uh, various crimes, and uh, I remember the story of a French donor who decided to help Ukraine to buy uh, naval drones, and uh, we asked him uh, what uh, title he would like to give this drone, and he said, uh, crime and punishment. So that's exactly what uh, you are doing, right? You are investigating the crimes uh, for those crimes not to go unpunished. So what should the um, dream, uh, justice transitional justice uh, be like f uh, in Crimea. Now, when it comes to the punishment of those crimes, uh, I recollect uh, the um, quotation from one of the uh, representatives of the judiciary who said that the punishment should be as tough as possible. So I did not expect it from uh, him, uh, frankly speaking, because uh, before the 24th of uh, February, all uh, prosecutors from Crimea uh, felt that they were in exile. And it took us a lot of uh, effort and persuasion uh, to prove it to the Ukrainian judiciary that uh, the crimes committed in Crimea are war crimes uh, because uh, the Russian Federation has illegally annexed uh, the uh, peninsula and the occupation of Crimea was about the war and nothing else but the war and I'm uh, sure that uh, punishment was well um, follows um, crime. So, and I had to prove it to my colleagues in the prosecutor general's office that, and to some of the judges uh, here that we should uh, be behaving uh, in a full line with the Ukrainian legislation, international law, um, and both humanitarian law and human rights law. 
So we uh, have organized our work in such a way that every fact of uh, grave and less grave violation of human rights or crimes would be documented, uh, reflected in our uh, uh, register of criminal proceedings, uh, pre-trial criminal proceedings. And we received a lot of information from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of uh, Justice, uh, inter, uh, interstate uh, organizations. We also uh, collect information from open sources in the so-called OSINT, open uh, sources of intelligence. And now we have our own register. Uh, and um, all of this information will be kept uh, intact uh, for um, all forever. So we've got uh, this huge database of uh, the perpetrators uh, of human rights abuses, of uh, supporting the occupying uh, authorities. Uh, so all, uh, all of those are uh, parts of either criminal or administrative uh, proceedings. And um, now we are uh, designing a plan for restoring our operation in the Crimea. We now know how many prosecutors we will need uh, there, how many prosecutorial offices or bodies we will uh, have to put in place there. And, um, we understand that uh, there is a lot of work ahead, um, and we will be tired and exhausted, but uh, we welcome this exhaustion. Thank you very much. Uh, so, um, Russians should get prepared. Uh, I mean, Russian uh, violators of human rights uh, and uh, Russian criminals. You said that uh, there is a lot of uh, work uh, awaiting us, uh, both for the prosecutors and uh, for the human rights defenders, for uh, civil society organizations. And how do you see your work in uh, the Crimea upon uh, deoccupation and as part of reintegration. We've got a lot of work right now, not uh, after uh, deoccupation. And one should underscore that uh, this all-out war uh, that uh, was unleashed on the 24th of February um, unified the entire society. And I've been observing this absolutely unique synergy in the work of uh, the public public authorities and CSOs. We work with the uh, rep office in the Crimea, with the prosecutor uh, prosecution um, uh, in uh, the Crimea, and I'm thankful to uh, all of uh, these institutions. As far as our plans are concerned, uh, we uh, cooperate with the uh, rep office uh, of the Ukrainian president in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea, and we already know what our first steps upon uh, liberation of uh, the Crimea should be. Tamila have, uh, has mentioned some of them, and it's a very important for me uh, that uh, there there should be a, um, a demand uh, for uh, this uh, on the part of the governmental authorities because CSOs have been working uh, in the uh, area of transit justice for quite a while, but now we see that uh, the government uh, is getting prepared uh, for restoring um, its activities uh, in uh, the Crimea. And uh, there are plans for different contexts of recovery there. The CSOs are not writing their own plans, but we would be reliable partners to the government, and we would uh, do our best to make sure that that uh, people who have stayed in uh, the Crimea would not suffer. Uh, we don't want uh, this um, witch hunt 
in um, uh, the Crimea after the deoccupation. And it is essential uh, for those people not to be afraid of deoccupation. We understand how um, poisonous uh, the information uh, space in Crimea is, uh, how uh, huge the uh, impact of uh, Russian propaganda in that uh, area is. And uh, people who a year ago uh, doubted that uh, Ukraine could uh, restore its sovereignty over the Crimea are now not that sure that it is totally impossible. And uh, I come from Simferopol, and uh, I uh, remember even the name of the street where the rep office uh, used to be. It is called Sobnarkomovska office. That is uh, the uh, street named after the uh, Soviet uh, of uh, the, or the Council of. Uh, communist uh, deputies. Uh, we uh, left the Crimean together with my family and my son is looking forward to uh, going back there. So I bought my uh, tickets uh, uh, to uh, the Crimea. Uh, I know about this uh, train of victory. My son says, I do want to be in Crimea, but it is so poisoned uh, by uh, the Russian Federation and it is incumbent on us to uh, to make the atmosphere there pure again, uh, not non-poisonous again, and welcoming for the people who um, care about the Ukrainian Crimea. We, um, it's the anniversary. We don't have a cake, but we have candles. And uh, if you could share your wishes before blowing down the um, uh, the candles, uh, where would you go in Crimea? Uh, Mr. Danilov, uh, I uh, told you about 1977 when I first um, went to Crimea. Uh, uh, I met a uh, uh, Crimean Tatar girl there, Damira, uh, and uh, I uh, would never um, uh, forget about this encounter. I won't tell my wife, though, that I would go exactly to the place where I met Damira. Yeah, you know, we are um, uh, just, it's the time of revelation about our secret life in uh, the Ukrainian Crimea. I remember where we uh, like to go to Crimea, to Simeis, uh, a small village close to the, that town, um, to a sanatorium uh, uh, named after Rayevsky. I loved everything about it, uh, the sea, uh, the uh, greenery, uh, the very air of the Crimea. I will return to my parents' home. They still live in a village in uh, Crimea, so I will return to my ancestors' uh, home. When I left uh, the Crimea in 2014, uh, they had uh, just completed the construction the building of their home. You know, Crimean Tatars uh, love uh, to build their own houses, and sometimes it takes half of their lives to uh, to build them. Um, everyone, every Crimean Tatar would know how to make um, uh, the concrete mix and how to lay bricks and all of those things. So. Um, my uh, home was built by uh, my mom and my dad, and I will return there. Rifataga? My parents returned to the Crimea in 1964. Uh, I grew up in Crimea. I uh, returned there uh, when I was 11. I lived in Krasnoperekopsk uh, district, close uh, to Kherson. 
And uh, uh, since I am the um, head of uh, the uh, Middle East of the Crimean Tatars, but I was uh, ousted from uh, my uh, home uh, place, I will return to my mother's house. Uh, she has been uh, waiting for me for nine years now. And then I will return to the office of the Majlis, and we will prepare for the new assembly of uh, Kurultai. And I'm sure that wonderful uh, deputies or uh, delegates will be elected to represent the entire people. Uh, I won't have the time to go there, but uh, uh, Nariman Suleimanov, my deputy, is a wonderful employee and he is a wonderful cook. I've known him for two years now, and he's uh, promised uh, that he would welcome the entire um, staff of the prosecutor's office. And we will go to his place, and he will treat us to wonderful um, Tatar, Crimean Tatar food. I will buy a ticket for a trolleybus from uh, Simferopol to Alushta, and I will go directly to the seaside. Uh, I will uh, say hello to the Black Sea, and then I will uh, go to my mom's and dad's home. I will go to Al Alushta as well, and uh, as I said, I've already got the ticket, the train ticket. Thank you very much, dear uh, friends. It was our panel discussion, which was sentimental on the one hand uh, and optimistic, but on the other hand, very practical. Thank you very much. Uh, next year, we meet in the Crimea. I would like to thank Sergei Musaeva for a wonderful moderation of the panel discussion. Uh, let us give her a round of applause. I would like to thank all of the panelists of this discussion and all the guests for their attention. And we are going on. So we will be rearranging the entire space uh, for uh, this talk to become less formal, perhaps. Come closer, will you? Uh, oh, can you please um, vacate the uh, back rows? Uh, they, uh, the chairs will be removed because we are in for uh, this artistic project and uh, the fundraising event. I will start with a very important element of this uh, event. You will all get a pen like this, a symbolic pen. It is dedicated to the 30th anniversary of uh, the President's Rep Office in the Autonomous Republic of Crimea. And it is our gift to all of you. You will be able to uh, place this pen close to your heart as a reminder that very soon we will return to the Ukrainian Crimea. And at the back of it, you can see the QR code um, with a link to the fund called Come Back Alive, and you can donate a certain uh, amount of money uh, to the 10th Saki Naval Aviation Brigade. So, and now to the presentation of artistic works, then fundraising uh, initiative, not only are we uh, raising funds uh, and encouraging you to donate, but we are also talking about the art, which also contributes to our common cause uh, and um, moves us closer to our victory. So come up uh, and have a look. Can you hear me well? Wonderful. Okay, uh, so we proceed. Uh, the best way to bring our victory closer, our speedy victory closer, is to provide for the Ukrainian defenders. And now I will give the floor to uh, those who initiated this uh, fundraising uh, event. So uh, you know that we are 
are now raising funds for uh, PANS in uh, Crimea. These are the people from the unit within the Soki Naval Aviation Brigade who will be um, just establishing coordinates and spotting the fire. So we encourage you to donate. There are several artistic components that we offer to your attention, and there are 10 Crimean artists who were inspired by uh, the uh, Ukrainian and Crimean Tatar activists and political prisoners, and they dedicated their artistic works to them, uh, to the first deputy of uh, the Crimean Tatar Menjlis Nerman Jalal, then Siran Saviv, Sirbir Mustafaev, Enver Musain Kuku, Irina Danilovic, Vladislav Yisipenko, Ludmila Dobropolova, as well as uh, some artistic works dedicated to uh, Bogdan Zizze and uh, Alexander uh, Terepona. Um, so the three of uh, the latter were arrested in the occupied Crimea after the 24th of February. Now, three representatives of the artistic community, uh, let me introduce them. Tamila Tashova, you know her, she's a permanent representative of the President of Ukraine in the Auto Autonomous Republic of uh, Crimea. Then Savil Musayeva, editor-in-chief of the Ukrainska Pravda newspaper, and uh, Ruslan Vilichko, uh, first deputy uh, chair of uh, the um, charity Come back alive. Thank you very much, friends. Thank you for being with us. We understand that many of you are extremely busy, but uh, the very fact that you've uh, uh, come and um, allocated some time to this initiative uh, means uh, a lot and uh, tells uh, just heaps to us. Um, so when we were discussing how to celebrate this anniversary, uh, we decided that uh, since we all uh, live through this war time, it is important for us to raise funds for the armed forces of Ukraine. It is the first uh, experience of raising funds uh, through such auctions, but we are willing uh, for it to be successful. Uh, we are very keen on it, and uh, that's why we invited our colleagues and friends, the Ukrainian pra uh, Pravda newspaper and Come Back Alive uh, charity, um, and some of uh, the performance artists uh, uh, that contributed uh, to this auction, to this fundraising initiative. So we've got a number of lots uh, that you can purchase. So this uh, auction is going to uh, last uh, for several weeks. As Evgeny said, we uh, collect uh, money for a unique brigade, which is the 10th Saki Naval Aviation Brigade. And we do hope that very soon our men and women will uh, get back to their permanent uh, dislocation base in uh, Crimea. That's it from me. So we've been uh, supporting uh, this charity, Come Back Alive, uh, all of the advertising uh, funds uh, were transferred uh, to this charity. And the Ukrainian Pravda newspaper is uh, read uh, by 2 million people on a daily basis, and uh, we encourage them to donate to the armed forces. 
So we provide a platform uh, for the charities uh, that uh, raise funds for different units. We uh, also have our own fund, and we uh, collected enough to uh, purchase 53 vehicles for the armed forces. And uh, now we uh, would like to also raise funds to support political prisoners. And I hope that by the end of this year, we will um, have uh, raised uh, enough uh, to close the, uh, the initiative. Now, every defender of Ukraine knows what they want to achieve as a result of their uh, participation in combat. Some want to return to their home, uh, uh, others uh, to uh, hug and cuddle their children. Others still would like to get to the Kremlin wall and write uh, a slogan there, victorious slogan there. Um, not less. And Igor Midzai, a hero of Ukraine, uh, has given his life uh, to uh, this common cause uh, and to uh, make sure that his dream comes true. And all of us can now contribute uh, to uh, this uh, fund to support uh, the brigade uh, named after this brave man. No matter how old we are, uh, no matter what avenue of life uh, we've uh, chosen, we can contribute to meeting the needs of the armed forces. And the uh, greatest value that we all share is the human life. That's why we are now announcing the fund uh, raising initiative targeting 10 million hryvnias. That will uh, actually meet 100% uh, of their needs in uh, vehicle stallings, uh, communication means, uh, and uh, navigation uh, gadgets. And that will uh, make uh, their um, activities uh, more focused. It will enable them to transfer data, uh, ground uh, air uh, connectivity um, will be uh, improved. And that will help preserve their lives and health. So please join our ranks. Thank you very much for these important words, and I would like to invite the artists uh, to uh, tell us more about their works. As I said, we've got uh, 10 works by 10 artists. They are dedicated to the activists and political prisoners uh, who have been resisting the occupation in uh, the Crimea. They were um, convicted totally illegally and on no grounds whatsoever. Uh, they were convicted for 12, uh, 15, 18 uh, years for being uh, loyal and um, and fair and dedicated to their uh, motherland. Uh, so uh, may I remind you about the uh, pins that you've got? One of them contains his uh, picture. This is a unique artist. Um, uh, he works with ceramics. He also chairs an NGO called Cheber, and he's an extremely generous and wonderful person. So uh, he uh, dedicated his work to Nariman Jalal, uh, who was illegally convicted for 17 years of imprisonment in maximum security jail. 
Good afternoon, uh, dear friends. Um, I will be speaking slowly because I'm just um, learning Ukrainian, and it is my first uh, public speech in the Ukrainian language. I would like to thank you for the invitation and uh, for this opportunity to join in this important project. I would also like to congratulate uh, the uh, Rep Office of uh, the President of Ukraine in the Autonomous Republic of um, Crimea on uh, their anniversary. And I would like to uh, thank you for everything for all you do uh, for the benefit of Ukraine and the Crimean Tatar people. Uh, this work is um, sort of a manifesto. Uh, it is a statement about what's going on with my countrymen and countrywomen in the Crimea. It is dedicated to uh, Nariman Jilal himself and his family. Uh, we keep in communication with his family, with his children. And he's a true hero, not only uh, to me, but to all of us. He's a true son of his uh, nation, of his country. So I would like to encourage you after this action to uh, join in a small performance and leave several messages uh, for his uh, family, his uh, wife and children. Thank you. So you will see uh, the sheets of paper and you will be able to write a brief message or a letter uh, to Nariman Jalal. Here you can see works uh, of different nature. Uh, these are castles, these are drawings and paintings. Um, for example, by Alevtina Kahidza. She comes from Donetsk and uh, she is uh, abroad. Uh, now, quite recently, he spoke in Strasbourg uh, at a session of the European Parliament. We hope that he will be with us online. Uh, uh, she cannot be projected, her, her video cannot be projected on this screen, but I hope to talk to her on the phone. She dedicated her work to uh, the journalist Irina Danilovich. Hi, Alevtina, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, all of us can hear you uh, well, um, too. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hi. So people say hi to you, too. Can you tell me about your work, about your drawings? Uh, they are all on the wall. Can you tell us about what in inspired you to uh, draw them? So what uh, they signify to you and what can they mean to other people? First of all, I've learned the stories of all of the people uh, that we are now um, discussing. And I uh, have huge respect uh, to all of them. But Irina Danilovich's uh, story impressed me most of all because uh, I have been uh, drawing uh, trials for uh, many years now. And she is covering trials in her work as well. So uh, when I was drawing uh, these works, I thought that I could be part of those trials, even of her trial. But uh, when I was in Kiev, I um, uh, drew made made 
це та людина, яка керувала Берку там 1 грудня, а також керувала скетчес of the snipers of those who killed the heroes of the heavenly a hundred and a lot of judges know me in Kiev because I go to those courts and I attend the trials but with Irina I had to imagine as if I were there while she was uh, uh, on trial and I imagine how it would feel if I were there and so I try to depict uh, those impressions um, in my drawings. Thank you very much, Levtina. I know that you will uh, return to Ukraine uh, soon. Uh, here are some scans of your works, but uh, auctioned will be uh, the originals of your drawings. Thank you very much. Let's uh, thank Levtina together. Yeah. I would like to show you the drawings. They uh, do exist in this wonderful block of uh, notes. Uh, and uh, you will get the originals, be sure. Uh, I'll be back in Kiev on the 20th of, um, of December. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's keep in touch. See you. I encourage you to uh, have special look at her works. Another presentation by the artist who's come to Kiev uh, personally. It is Olena Kainska. Now the floor is yours, Olena. Her work is dedicated uh, also to one of the activists. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It is great honor for me to be with you here when I was invited to join in this uh, project from the Rep Office of the President of Ukraine in the Autonomous Republic of, Cr of Crimea. I understood that uh, it is uh, a token of great trust to me and that the topic is very complex and painful and poignant. And and uh, it echoes uh, with my own project called Trauma that I started even before the 24th of February, and it is ever more uh, relevant uh, today. So my work is dedicated to uh, Emir uh, Hussein Uku. Uh, when I learned about his story, I uh, analyzed a lot of materials about his life, his biography, the details about his uh, arrest. I also saw a lot of videos of his family members, uh, wife and children. Uh, so now I think that I know this man uh, personally, and I thought of a metaphor that I could apply uh, to actually reflect uh, this biography in the best possible way. And once, uh, uh, as I learned from his uh, wife, uh, uh, they heard pounding on their door and the attackers tried to break into their uh, their uh, family home. They failed, but a part of their wall uh, fell off. And we can see just this uh, and with a golden dome, which symbolizes the purity of faith and moral principles. Uh, espoused by the members of this family. We see Crimean uh, mountains uh, at the backdrop, and we can see this uh, house of Crimean Tatars that symbolizes purity and light. At the same time, we see this abyss, this uh, hell uh, as an embodiment uh, of um, 
of uh, evil. And these uh, red uh, snakes are trying to get to this good uh, and purity and uh, kill it just for the sake of evil. And these snakes are trying to get into the house. And we can see the coins uh, uh, there strewing the stairs. Uh, we know that uh, Emir collected coins, and they symbolize the uh, destruction of uh, the peaceful life and respect that uh, Emir enjoyed and his family enjoyed amongst the Crimean Tatar people. And uh, we also see uh, these scarves uh, uh, as a symbol of uh, tears of his wife after he was arrested. Thank you very much. So I will uh, oh, show you some of the works, uh, and then I will invite yet another artist to talk to you. There are four posters here that the uh, artist uh, dedicated to Siran Salib, a political prisoner, and uh, uh, the artist has contributed the original of this work to our auction. And it is the work of Zirka Slavka, dedicated to Server Mustafai. You can see this pain caused uh, to every political prisoner by the jailers, by the occupiers. This is the work uh, dedicated uh, to uh, Halina Dovhopola. We unfortunately do not even have any pictures from the trial because uh, she was uh, deemed um, a spy and all of uh, the trial uh, sessions were in camera. This is uh, Bogdan Zizé's work. Um, he actually threw a yellow and blue uh, paint on the um, administrative building in Yevpatoria. Uh, this is the work dedicated to Nenimanjilal as well. And I would like to give the floor to a well-known artist who dedicated his work to uh, Alexander Tarapon, yet another activist who uh, put some resistance uh, to the occupation. And he also invited other artists to contribute their works to this auction. And now we've got with us uh, other artists, Ukrainian artist Jana Kadera, uh, then uh, Ukrainian artist uh, uh, and laureate of Tara Shevchenko uh, Prize, Nikita Kadan. Uh, also, Vlada Ralko, who is laureate of the UN Prize Women in Art. Vladimir Budnikov, uh, then Lada Nakanechna, uh, then Oleksiy Sai, uh, a well-known Ukrainian artist. Taras Kovac, uh, Yevhen Korshinov, Darina Kuzmich, Yuri Balsu and Sergei Sabakara. And it's not the whole list of uh, the uh, donors of the uh, philanthropists. And now I will give the floor to Volodymyr Kuznetsov, a very well-known Ukrainian artist. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for inviting me to participate in this event. I wish we could uh, achieve the liberation of uh, the Crimea and all of the release of all of the political prisoners. We have to uh, put up resistance to uh, the occupiers and we have to fight against oppression. Uh, we uh, artists have, uh, can contribute to this fight. 
In 2014, the Solidarity Committee um, organized. Uh, um, the Solidarity Committee was organized to support Kolchenko and Sintsov. Uh, but Maxim Butkevich, uh, other uh, cinema. Um, artists and photographers also joined in that initiative. So this creative cooperation, this creative approach helped uh, us to organize a lot of a lot of very powerful uh, campaigns uh, like this crack on the art of uh, the uh, friendship of people then uh, the empty chair initiative, etc. So uh, we are now speaking about solidarity and cooperation between artists and human rights defenders. And that is a very promising uh, cooperation, I should say. So the auction organizers at first were not sure whether the artists would respond um, uh, readily, but when I uh, spread the word about this uh, auction, all of them were extremely responsive, coming up with um, either existing works or they specifically um, painted uh, works uh, for this auction. So, oh, if you buy these works, remember that you would be not investing in art alone, but also in uh, the solidarity with political prisoners and activists. Thank you, Vladimir. It is our great pleasure that uh, we are not speaking only about painters, but about artists uh, of uh, different uh, genres. We've, uh, uh, we've got uh, ceramic works here, we've got a sculpture dedicated to journalist Vladislav Yusipenko. He's the correspondent of uh, Radio Liberty. And, uh, we also have got this symbolic folder dedicated to uh, Serviet Vaziev. So I encourage you to uh, have a look, uh, share your impressions, participate in a small performance um, by Rustem Stebin. And on Monday, when we open up this auction, every lot will be described um, and uh, photographed. Uh, the picture will be there on the website of the Ukrainska Pravda newspaper. And uh, you will be able to contribute to the uh, Comeback uh, Live charity. So please um, subscribe uh, to our uh, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, uh, uh, social media. We've got our own pages uh, there. We've got our web pages as well. So that will contribute to the promotion of this initiative. And we will see how art opens up new front uh, and uh, may I remind you about our target of uh, 10 million hymnals for the 10th Saki Naval Aviation Brigade. Let us give a round of applause to all of uh, the contributors because they are telling the story of heroic people in the Crimea. Thank you very much for being with us today or tonight. We are very glad to cooperate with you. We are open to new ideas, uh, to new works that can become yet other lots 
at our auction. So if we come up with new initiatives of such auctions, we will keep you posted. And you will have the exhaustive list and description of all the works donated on the web page of the Ukrainska Pravda. We've got uh, Anna Tsigima with us. Um, she's the director of the movie documentary dedicated to Neriman Jilal. We were planning to um, show this uh, movie to all of you, but, you know, the circumstances are different, but uh, this um, documentary is available online and it was also shown at uh, the um, Crimean platform session. Thank you very much for the invitation. We started shooting this documentary about uh, Nerman Jalal before the uh, large-scale invasion. It was supposed to be a story about uh, a, an understanding and uh, outstanding, I would say, individual who stayed in the Crimea all the time. But after the uh, all-out war mm, was unleashed, we had to revise our concept of this uh, documentary, adding some new senses to it. After this large-scale Russia's invasion of Ukraine, we understood that we had to talk to people in the recently deoccupied uh, areas, uh, and we asked them about how they felt while uh, under occupation, and they said that they were kept alive by their hope that uh, the um, land would be deoccupied and they will return to Ukraine. When we were shooting our movies or, uh, say, documentaries about um, Sinsovo uh, Kolchenko, we did not quite appreciate what it meant to live under occupation. Sometimes we actually blamed people who uh, remained in, uh, in the Crimea after its occupation. And only now now, do we come to understand that people under occupation are extremely resilient and extremely hopeful? Nariman lived for eight years in the Crimea, and he was a torch of hope. He was a voice. He was uh, a link. Uh, uh, he um, actually um, conveyed uh, to um, his countrymen and countrywomen what people in Crimea were feeling and suffering through at that time. What they were experiencing there. So I hope you will uh, watch this um, documentary online and uh, find it uh, inspiring and illuminating. In 2021, when the Crimean platform was set up, at the uh, summit, um, Nariman Jalal uh, took part in it, and it was because of that that he was apprehended in the occupied uh, Crimea, and then on trumped up um, accusations, he was uh, tried and convicted. So, and I would like to encourage you yet again to participate in um, the auction and to watch this film. So, we've got uh, pictures dedicated to 10 outstanding uh, political prisoners and activists from the Crimea. The Ukrainian Pravda newspaper will um, feature 
the developments in this auction on its pages. Thank you very much. Oftentimes, the people say that uh, our office is a corner, Crimean corner in Kiev, and we do believe that it will grow and go to. Uh, to uh, the Crimea, uh, but uh, the Mosafir restaurant that is uh, uh, treating you to uh, Crimea and Tatar food to tonight uh, will uh, remain in Kiev and will be, you will be able to enjoy it. So, as I said, uh, next anniversary uh, will be celebrated in a free Ukrainian Crimea. Thank you. Як звучать важливі слова, коли один скаже «Слава Україні», йому мільйони відповідуть. Дякую вам за те, що ви сьогодні були з нами. До зустрічі в Бахчисарай. Дякую.